All right. <clears throat> I'm Greg Vandy, KXP, streaming around the world at kxp.org, and I'm really happy to have Joan Shelley in studio. Thanks for having us. Isn't 
this sweet when I say isn't this right when I say you should play with me this time what do you think when I say let's leave it be when I say oh we'll be fine when I say we would always change our minds don't make me make up a story don't make me say what this is Joan Shelley on KXP in the Roadhouse. Great to have you here, Joan. Thanks for having me. The Push and Pull is that song. And the first one was If the Storms Never Came from mm-hmm. the new album. It's a self-titled record, your fourth record on yeah. No Quarter Records. Great to have you here. Yeah, thanks. Great yeah. to be here in this sparkly with Nathan, little room. Nathan Salzberg on That's guitar. Right. How long have you been playing with Nathan? We've been touring for two years straight, it feels like. Yeah, um, so and since the last record playing, opening, been, yeah. yeah. On all those records, Nathan has had a role, at least on one song, but okay. with Over and Even, we kind of went in two guitars, extremely two guitars. Yeah. yeah, I'm a big fan of Nathan. Good to have you here as well. Thanks, Greg. Um, so the new record is uh, was a Chicago recording at The Loft with Jeff Tweedy. And how did he get involved with uh, working with you? We met at Mountain Stage Radio Show mm-hmm. in West Virginia, and uh, he had heard Over and Even, and was, I guess, Jim Elkington was in his band at the time. Right. And Nathan and Jim are connected, and so we all got to talking. And then later, he just seemed like a really reasonable person. Mm-hmm. And later, the idea came in. And we asked him, so it's yeah. kind of on a whim. And then Jim Elkin is on the record as well. Yes. Yeah. I read that there's a lot of first takes, which is a little bit rare when you're recording. Is that true, that you just laid it down and that was good the first time? Yeah, and I think a lot of people, I, I know some people who do that too, but I think what's especially rare is uh, Spencer Tweedy doing a first take after not hearing the song. <laughs> wow. So a, a percussionist, like a drummer doing that is pretty special in yeah. my book. Yeah. yeah. You know, I was doing some reading and I was uh, came across the, the fact that you said Michael Hurley sort of uh, got you in the right frame of mind to make this record. You heard the song uh, Hog and Forsaken on yeah. Long Journey, right? And mm-hmm. you were saying how that sort of uh, made you hear things differently. Yeah, it certainly freed some things up. I what think was that's, it? Yeah, he will do that to a person. Um, but he also loves old-time music and traditional tunes and, and the way he played a fiddle in, in, as his, yeah, he would take a break. And he's kind of the scratchy, rugged fiddle player and just so playfully... Um, just surrounded those melodies. There's something about that, that unison melody with your mm. instrument that was inspiring to me. Yeah, he's down in Astoria, Oregon. We just played a show with him last night in Portland. Oh, you did? He came yeah. out? Yeah, got God, to hang out with more. him. What was that like? Character. Oh, man. Yeah. He's got the best stories. I or bet. at least the best, like, catchphrases. I don't even know what yeah. you could call it. He loves talking about cars. Yeah, mm-hmm. His car always has a problem. And <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. 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 Well, it's great to have you here. The album is uh, wonderful, getting a lot of good press, and uh, I'm really glad you made it in. So how about another song? This is Joan Shelley in the Roadhouse on (laughs) KEXP. Here we go. Saw you there beside the light post, your shoulders square against the night's cold. I blame the wind when my legs shook, but sure. Now I 
Find You by Joan Shelley from her fourth album, is self-titled on No Quarter. It's great to have you here. What is that song about? Oh, I think uh, fear of abandonment. I don't know. A lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> How do songs come to you? Where do you start with, with your songs? I try to start from nowhere. Uh, I think I read some... Or no, our friend, a poet in Ireland was telling us... Uh, Somebody, a qu- another poet had advised, if you know what you're going to write about before you're going to write it, don't bother. If you already know your message, don't bother. I think that's a good advice. If, you already, if you're not discovering anything on the way, then it's yeah. not worth your time. You've also talked about discipline in terms of writing mm-hmm. every day, that if you set a sort of a schedule, you can sort of get the, the bad songs out of the way and open the door to new songs. Yeah, I think there's a good place. Discipline is yeah is a big part of that. You're from Louisville, Kentucky, and I didn't know until recently that Louisville's I don't know it's kind of a hotbed for music lately. With you and mm. and Nathan, you live in Louisville as well. And then uh, Nathan, your neighbor down the road, I think is Will Oldham, if I'm not mistaken. He is. Yeah, a few blocks away. Yeah, and you've been collaborating with with Will Oldham. Um, both, both of you us. have mm-hmm. recently. Yeah, yeah. So Louisville, I, I you know I know Muhammad Ali and the Kentucky Derby, but I I didn't know much more about it. What is going on there? Man, it's hard to say. A lot of things for a while. A lot of things. It's a good mixing place. Mm-hmm. I think top of the South is an interesting social and political place. Geographical. It's by the Ohio River. And I think that's a big part of it. Something's in the water, as yeah. Catherine Irwin likes to say. Yeah. Another great Louisville band. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Freak water. Um, now, were you raised there or did you move there? I moved there. Technically, I didn't live in the city. I didn't, I was afraid of the city until I came back after college. So, yeah. Then I got to check it out. But Nathan was raised there. Yeah. Got to see it all. And when I talk about Nathan being a bit of a hero of mine, it has a lot to do with Nathan, is also the curator for the Alan Lomax uh, archive. And you've been doing that for, I think, 17 years, you told me, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so there's a, a source of, of songs when you, I know you're a big collector, but do you uh, source old melodies for your guys' songs or do you just create new melodies all the time? Was, you know, a, a, a big part of the folk singer tradition is, is using old melodies and writing new, 
uh, words and, and lyrics, but do you mm-hmm. ever do that or do you just do original stuff all the time? Well, I think we all things are recycled mm-hmm. um, personally. Um, but certainly using, I think, some of the older songs before maybe it got a little more homogenized and commercial. There's just, there's more wilder, you know, more wilder. That sounds good, Kentucky. Um, there's wilder melodies, more, you know, diverse ways of making a melody. And so it's a good thing to go back to and kind of learn and study. Um, Nathan, you do all kinds of compositions, but, um, and traditionals are a big part of, I guess, yeah. Yeah, I guess you're always sort of absorbing things subconsciously when you really go deep with music. Yeah. Where you're sort of using stuff that's, I guess, already been done, but you sort of interpret it and then turn it out fresh for your own stuff. Yeah. Seems to be the way it is. I yeah. Think so. Hey, can you guys talk about open tunings? You mentioned about being sort of a tuning band before we started up. <laughs> um, and I've noticed that a lot of music I like uh, is open tuning stuff, and I have no idea what that is. Yeah, it's an interesting thing. I learned a lot of the tunings, well, first. Uh, exploring them for songwriter purposes is a way of throwing off my muscle memory from chord shapes. It was a way to confuse my hand to try to search for a new, a new melody. And that was really, um, and more songs are generated when I'm with a new instrument. So that's the same kind of method. But a lot of my tunings, once I started um, just kind of sticking to a few, I picked up Nathan's guitars and played his tuning. So I don't know how he got his tuning. Yeah. Nathan, what's an open G as opposed, as opposed to a regular G? How is it open? So an open G is basically when you just strum the strings without having to fret anything and you play a G chord. Mm-hmm. So it goes back at least to the sort of parlor guitar era, the 1870s, when people were picking up guitars in polite society. And uh, it's funny, the first one of the first popular guitar books came out, I forget the guy's name, but he says in the beginning something about, you know, a lot of people will tell you that you can pick up a guitar and, and restring it so you play an open chord and, uh, and make people think that you're a far better musician than you are. And uh, I think that's sort of the case with a lot of sort of American, that American primitive guitar playing, you know, the sort of drone style of playing. Yeah. You can just tune to an open chord and just bang away and, you know, create music that way, which certainly has its place. John Fahey, of course, was the progenitor of, uh, not the progenitor, but the popularizer of that for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. I think what we bring to the task um, when Joan and I collaborate is maybe a little bit more of an interest in the way the Brits did it and the Irish did it. They would use alternate tunings, but largely to sort of um, incorporate their guitars as sort of harmony voices and arrangements of traditional ballads and things. I've always been interested in like Paul Brady and Nick Jones, especially more than anybody the kind of British approach to that, um, which is much more chordal, but there's just a lot of more, you know, sort of sympathetic ringing and, you know, the strings are, there's just more happening on six strings, I think, when you're playing, when you can play in an open tuning, but still chord, a lot of interesting sort of harmonics. Yeah. Uh, You mentioned the the ballad, uh, British ballad folks and and, uh, the the Scottish ballads. Uh, Do you listen to that quite a bit? Are you sort of sourcing that unconsciously a little bit when you, when you write songs? Are you a fan of, of Sandy Denny and, and sure, those yeah. guys? Sure, yeah, huge Fairport Convention fan. and uh, I came to a lot of it through friends and only later. But earlier I had an affection for Irish music from my mom and listening to kind of, that was like our Christmas music, you know? Oh, it was really? kind of like, what makes you feel really cozy? It was this Irish stuff in the house. So yeah, that's always been in my, yeah, I don't know if it's DNA or if it's just, yeah. Yeah. Nurture. Are you guys familiar with uh, Casey and Clayton, who also just recorded with Jeff Tweedy, ironically, and, and they're yeah. also, you know, huge sort of uh, British folk revival type fans. Yeah, we met them at the Solid Sound Festival just recently. They were really sweet and oh, yeah. uh, great, great players, singers. Yeah, 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 definitely. This is Joan Shelley with Nathan Salzberger in the Roadhouse. And how about a uh, final song? I, I requested this one. I would love you to do over and even the title track from your fantastic earlier album from from 2015. Yeah. We 
beside the morning softly Take to them easy The scent of the wooden coffee Our cup is filling Outside the river flows It's course unfolding Strength it never knows The sweet of Joan Shelley with Nathan Salzberg, the Over and Even song from the previous album. The new record is great, it's self-titled, it's on No Quarter, and they're playing the tractor in Ballard tonight. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having us. We'll see you out there tonight. All right. This is KEXP. Discover new music at listener-powered KEXP.org.